Howdy, howdy, everyone. Chris here, and welcome back to Garage Noise. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you the techniques and procedures that I use to get this dent straight and ready for paint. And hopefully you can take those skills and use those in your own repair. There's going to be a lot of information in this video, a lot of helpful information that I think you can use. The first step in any repair is to get that panel clean. So you want to wash it with wax and grease remover or a water-based cleaner. Next, you want to remove the dent, and I decided to use the cold glue system on this dent. This is a glue that you press into the dent, and then you use a slide hammer to remove the dent. And as you can see, it pulled out quite a bit of the dent. The cold glue system really works best with the larger dents. When it comes to fine-tuning this, we're going to use a couple different methods to get the remaining portions of this dent removed. So the cold glue system got about 70% of this dent out. We still have some crowns and some low areas that we're going to push out with a PDR rod and we're going to tap down those crowns because when a dent is created, it's going to raise the metal around that dent. So we need to tap that down, but we'll get into that in a minute. So after I push this dent out, you can see I pushed out some of those low areas and got it quite a bit better. Now what we'll do is we'll use a tap down to tap down any of the high areas because we have some areas where we, I pushed a little too far. I need to tap those down and tap down the crowns and get those flattened out as much as possible. It doesn't take much with this tap down. I'm just lightly tapping these high areas and then there's a crown on the upper portion right here where I'm going to tap down with this rubber hammer. Now we need to remove this paint and get it down to bare metal. But before we do that, I want to show you the low areas that are left. So I've got some 80 grit sandpaper on a firm block here, and I'm just going to block it flat. And that's going to show us where our high and low areas are. As I block this, I'm going to break through the paint into bare metal. Those are our high areas. And anywhere where paint remains, that's a low area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and use the tap down and tap those down, try and level it out just a little bit more before we start using this file. And this tool is a shrinking slapper. I'm using it to file down a little bit of metal. And then what I'll do is I'll use it with a hammer to slap down these high areas and crowns. Now I'll take my orbital sander with some 80 grit sandpaper and we're gonna machine sand around this repair area and feather edge out the paint so it's nice and smooth. I purposely left the paint in those low areas so I know exactly where they're at because now I'm going to take my belt sander with some 36 grit sandpaper on it and sand off that paint so we can use our G90E to weld to those low areas and pull those out. Now I'm going to use a tool called the G90E and what this essentially is is a welder with a slide hammer attached to it. It welds the tip in the center of the low area and then you can slide hammer or pull it out. This is a really good tool to refine those small repair areas and do the finish work on a dent. The G90E is an inexpensive option to what's usually a very expensive tool. If you want to learn more about this tool, check out my review and demo of it. I'll leave a link in the description. Now I take the shrinking slapper and I'll file down the metal tool marks made by the G90E. I'll sand over once again with 80 grit sandpaper and then I'll use my hammer and the shrinking slapper to knock down any little waves that I feel. You can use guide coat and a block to expose any higher low areas if you have trouble feeling them. I'll use the G90E to pull out a few minor little low areas. We'll grind this metal clean and then we'll get a good look at it before we apply our finishing glaze. And this is all that remains of the dent. You can see where the high areas are. I went over it with the metal file and you can see the high areas in the center there and then the low areas around it. And that's just a very shallow wave. We're gonna fill that with some polyester glazing putty. 
I'll be using the Evercoat Body Shop line glazing putty. This is a really good product you can pick up at your local auto parts store. We'll also use the clean sheet pad to mix it up. But first, we need to tape up this repair. I want to tape up this taillight pocket so we don't get any filler in that area. I went ahead and mixed up a small amount of glazing putty, and then we applied it over this repair area. Now, when you're mixing it up, it calls for about 2% hardener, and you just want to fold that in until it's all one uniform color. I'll sand over this quickly just with some 80 grit sandpaper to knock off the roughness, and then we'll switch over to 180. Now I've switched over to 180 on a small block, and we want to block this in a crosshatch pattern or an X pattern to get it perfectly straight. If you're concerned about being able to get it perfectly straight, go ahead and use a guide coat. Now this is a black powder guide coat, and this is going to show us any high or low areas when we're blocking. Now we'll be able to see when those 80 grit scratches get removed with the 180. I'm just letting the sandpaper do the work in an X pattern, cross hatch pattern. And now we'll block over it with 320 grit sandpaper just to remove those 180 grit scratches and then we'll use the orbital sander to get it ready for primer. Now I use 320 to remove some of these scratches around the edge. This is good, but down here there's some 80 grit scratches. With Now I'll run over the outside edges with a little bit of 600 before we primer this. Now we're ready for some primer, so let's mask this off. We'll back tape here. I'll tape up the rest of this repair area so we can eliminate overspray from getting on the rest of the vehicle. And I've created a soft edge. I fold the paper over so we have a soft edge of primer. This is the primer we're using today. It's the Roberlo ME1. It's a direct to metal primer and can also be used as a sealer. And this is the hardener here. So it's four to one. That's four parts primer and one part hardener. So what you do is you find the ratio at the top, four to one to one. We're going to use the four for the primer and then the one for the hardener. We'll stir it up. We'll attach the PPS lid and our 3M Performance gun, and then we'll be ready to spray. Now, I'm using the 3M Performance gun, and we're using this as a very low air pressure, around 15 PSI. And I've got my volume turned down. My fan turned down a little bit. We don't need a lot of overspray from this primer. Now we are putting two coats on. We'll put one coat on, let it flash off for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll apply a second coat. And now we'll be ready to block this and get this painted. If you found this video helpful and want to learn more about how to do paint and body repair on your vehicle, I hope you would check out my channel and consider subscribing. If you want to help support the channel and more videos like this, all you have to do is like this video and check out my links down in the description. Next week, I'll share with you how to sand this primer and prep out this panel for paint. We'll talk about masking, painting silver, and clear coat. So don't miss anything. I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.